One last type of uh, enthalpy value that we will look at in this chapter is related to looking specifically at the energy held in bonds. So we're going to talk about bond energies. And this is the energy required to break one mole of the bonds in the gas phase. Now what we will actually see reported um, are things called average bond energies. And so these can are from averages across different types of compounds. So bond energies can vary across compounds. So for example, you know, we might talk about the energy, the bond energy for a carbon hydrogen bond, all of the other stuff that's attached to carbon will affect the carbon hydrogen bond. Um, but we will use reported averages. So these will be in a table. Let's just say tabulated. Um, in your textbook and in the equation sheet. So these are values that you'll be given. What the bond energy values mean is that a higher value means a stronger bond. What you will see in the table is that everything is a positive value. That's the amount of energy you have to put in to break a bond like that. Which means, if you think about the reverse of it, if you make a bond like that, you should get that much energy out. And so we are going to use bond energies to get delta H reaction in yet one more way. So using bond energy, so it'll be delta H B to find delta H reaction. So this is where your knowledge of Lewis structures is going to be extremely important. So the reaction that we want to look at is CH4 gas plus Cl2 gas turning into CH3Cl plus HCl gas. So in this reaction, there were some bonds that were broken, and then we made some bonds. We can add up all of the energy that we put in and get out and get a delta H reaction for this. Now it will come as an equation. And I'm going to give you two forms. So the easiest version to use, although not all textbooks report it this way, and it's going to look really familiar, except we're talking about bond energies. So if you take the sum of the bonds that were broken, where you had to put in energy, and you subtract the sum of the bonds that were formed, you will get a delta H reaction. So this is a standard form. If you are looking in a textbook like TRO, um, which may either be the assigned textbook or one of the recommended reference textbooks, they did something really silly and they said delta H reaction equals delta H B broken plus, I'm like, oh no, why did you do this? Delta sum of delta H B formed. So intro, 
because of the plus sign, you have to add negative signs to everything that was formed. We're going to do this in, a, in an example right now. We'll talk about how you would handle that if you didn't need to put the negatives in. The whole thing is recognizing you put in energy to break a bond, you get back energy when you form a bond. So if we go back to our example, well, okay, I don't see any of these bonds. Now you could probably get through this one specifically without drawing the Lewis structures, but you know that on the exam, part A will be draw all the Lewis structures. So let's make sure that we actually have this. And sometimes it can help you identify what was broken and what was made or, you know, how many of each were broken and made. So CH4 plus Cl2 turning into CH3Cl and H. CL. So we broke one carbon hydrogen bond, one chlorine chlorine bond, and we formed one carbon chlorine bond and one hydrogen chlorine bond. So broken is one CH. 1CLCL. And then I'm going to leave some space. I really recommend setting this up this way because now you have a data table that you can fill in. We formed 1CCL and 1HCL. Go to the table, go to the appendix, wherever you happen to have this data. You see that, I'm going to label this, all my broken ones is energy I have to put in. So for each carbon hydrogen, it's 414 kilojoules. CCL is 243. Oh, that's CLCL. CCL is 339. And HCL is 431. So if I have this nice broken minus formed, I just have to dump these values in. If I'm in tro, which I mean circle tro, I don't know, in purple. We'll show this a couple of ways because we have to add the negative. So in most places, you do broken minus formed. And so our delta H reaction is broken, which was 414 plus 243 minus the formed, which is 339 and 431. You can see that negative there puts it into place for everything that we need. And so this gives us negative 113 kilojoules. This is my delta H reaction based on the bonds that I broke and formed. If we're using tro and you have the plus version, the delta H reaction is, it's still 414 plus 243, and then it has you add them together. Let me show the difference in purple. We have to say negative 339 minus 431, and you still get negative 113 kilojoules. But I just want you to be aware of what the different equations look like and um, how you can handle it depending on which one you have. All right. So in this example, I had one mole of everything that I was working on. I'm going to start this next example. Um, you can use it for practice. I'll give you the answers that you can check your answer and um, absolutely come to me if you have any questions. So this says use bond energies to calculate delta H reaction. 
And I will always say use bond energies, right? So like our clues are, if there's a circle, it's standard. You can use formations from the table. If it says use bond energies, it means use delta HB. So our reaction is CH4 plus 2H2O turning into 4H2 plus CO2. All right, oh, I need this label, this gas and gas. So what I'm gonna tell you is that this is the place where you should pause the video and see if you can come up with this. You probably wanna draw the Lewis structures and you want to make sure to read any table that you have very carefully when you pull values. So broken, you break four CH bonds and four OH bonds. You form four HH bonds and two C double bond O. I'm going to put a star here because you form them in carbon dioxide. So you should be able to get a delta H reaction of 170 kilojoules for this reaction. The key pieces are the number of bonds, right? Keep an eye on what's going on within your Lewis structure and the number of molecules of each that you have. Um, and keep an eye on do this in orange, any special cases. CO2 is going to be a special case and it should be labeled as such in your table. So look really carefully. Now in this example, right, pretty much every bond broke and then all of the bonds on the product side reformed, which is different from the first example we did. However, my pro tip on this is that when in doubt, just break everything. Break every bond in the reactants and form all of the bonds in the products. Because this is a state function. It doesn't matter how you get there as long as you start in the right place and end up in the right place. So if you are having any trouble, just look at your reactants, break every single bond, look at your products, form every single bond. And if you accidentally broke a CH bond that you ended up reforming, all you're going to do is add and subtract the same number from your final answer. So it'll work out all even in the end.